In the parsha of the Nesi, of the Korbanis of the Nesim, by the second Nasi, Rashi brings me Yisoydish or Rab Moshe Adarshan that the details of the Korbanis of the Nesim are all hinting to various different things. Kari's case of the silver bowls is Begematria 930, corresponding to the years of Adam or Rishon. Mizrak Echot Kesef, one silver, also a type of bowl. This is a remis to Noyach, as Rashi explains why that is. Kaf Achas, one spoon, corresponding to the Torah. Par Echot, Ayel Echot, Kevas Echot, these different animals, these different, the bull, the ram, and the sheep are corresponding to the Avois. Seir Izim related to Mechiras Yosef. Ulezevach HaShlomim, Bokar Shnayim, the two cattle for the Shlomim, corresponding to Moshe and Aaron. Then Elim, Atudim, Kvasim, Rams, male goats, sheep, corresponding to Koinim, Levim, Yisraelim, etc. Now, why does Rashi generally need to bring any of these Remozim regarding the Karbonis of the Nesim, which is more a matter of Remez, of Hint, and Drush, when Rashi is usually as Pirush as completely Aldera Chapshat? And if yes, why is he only bringing it by the second Nasi? Why isn't he bringing it by the first Nasi? Says the Rebbe, we discussed another time at length in another Sicha, is that's because what's difficult to Rashi is, what Rashi is finding difficult is why is the Pasuk repeating by every Nasi individually, that's 12 times, all the details of all the Karbonois, if they're anyways all bringing the same Karbonois, it could have very easily just said by the second Nasi, the pastor could have just said, and so to by the other Nesim, that they brought exactly the same Karbonis as the previous Nesim. So from the fact that the Torah is repeating all the details again, Rashi learns that by bringing these Karbonis, each Nasi, although technically bringing the same animals and the same things, but each one had individual specific Kavonis, intentions, Remozim, hints, that they had in mind, which would be according and fitting with what their Shevet is all about. And therefore, the carbonos of each nasi, although again, technically the same carbonos, but in the kavan of the carbonos, really they are very different to the other nasiim. And that's what the Pasuk is trying to tell us by repeating all of these things, all the details by each and every nasi individually. Says the Rebbe, if that's the case, why is it then that Rashi only brings one remez? It's only by the second nasi, he doesn't do this by the further nasiim. He only brings one remez for each one of these carbonos. And somehow, this is supposed to help us understand why the Torah repeats it 12 times. And this is clearly different to the Medrash, where the Medrash, in fact, does bring an individual different type of remez for the different carbonis by the different Nesim. So the reason for this is, says the Rebbe, because the Ramazim that Rashi brings really apply to all of the Nesim in a general way. But again, each one of these has specific, specific a- aspects of it, which that's what the, each individual Nasi will then have within this general Kavono. That Rashi does bring, each Nasi will then have individual Kavonos within that aspect itself, which is again going to be more related to his Shevet, again as explained in another Sikha at length. However, says the Rebbe, we need to understand, it's obvious that the Ramazim of all these details of the Karbonis that each Nasi is bringing is not just a bunch of separate individual things that, you know, are Ramazim for different aspects and different Inyanim going on, but rather that all of the Karbonis and the details of what's being brought all have some sort of common theme. They're all part of one general idea and these Karbonis are details of that. In fact, in the Medrash, we find that the Medrash starts off, before it starts discussing the individual details of the Karbonis and the Ramazim of each Nasi, it first gives us a general idea, a general remez of what this Nasi had in mind. For example, by Nachshon, who's from Shevet Yehuda. So the Medrash explains how his Ramazim are all to do with the idea of Melucha. By Nesanel, all of his Karbonis and his Ramazim are related to Torah and so on and so forth. But when we come to Rashi, seemingly we don't see that all of these details that Rashi does bring are somehow part of one general idea of one general concept. So this is what we need to understand. Says the Rebbe, in Medrash there is an opinion that all of the things that Nesim brought were corresponding to the generations from Adam or Rishon all the way to the Mishkan and the mitzvahs that they had, that they were commanded. 
And as it goes on to explain over there how Kari's Kesef would be a remis to Adam or Isha and Mizrak corresponding to Noyach, etc. So seemingly we could say the same thing as what Rashi is doing, that this is the general theme that Rashi has in mind. And as Rashi goes through the generations, he starts off with Adam or Isha and his children, and Noyach and his children, the 70 nations, the Avois. He mentions Yosef, Moshe, Aaron, as well as also the Mitzvois, as we see that Rashi also goes through the Torah, the Aseris Hadibrois, the Taryag Mitzvahs. He mentions Torah, Nevi'im, and Ksuvim, and so on. However, says the Rebbe, even if we want to learn this, there's still a difficulty. And that is, number one, what the Maharal asks. What is the years of Adam, Moshe, and Noyach? have anything to do with what we are discussing over here in our context of Hanukkah, HaMizbeach, the dedication of the Mizbeach and the Mishkan. Number two, if this is the way we're looking at it, so the Karbonois and the Ramazim of the Karbonois should have seemingly been in the Pesukim in the way Rashi explains them according to the order of the generations. Now, although generally it seems like it might be, but we see that there's an interruption over here between the Karbonois that correspond to Noyach and that which corresponds to Avram, in middle comes in Kaf Achas, one silver spoon, which Rashi tells us is connected to Torah. And that's more going to be obviously to do with the time of Moshe and Aaron. So why is that coming in, in between Noach and Avram? The Rebbe asks some more questions we also need to understand. On Kaf Achas Asorozov, one silver spoon, made of, um, that, that's, that's of 10 shekel uh, of gold, Rashi explains, Kaf Achas corresponds to the Torah that's given from the hand of Hashem. So the word Kaf can be understand, understood over here also as a palm or a hand. Asaros of 10, 10 gold, 10 golden shekel, corresponds to the Aseris Hadibris. Then further on, Rashi says, on the words Eilim Atudim Kvasim, the rams, the male goats, the sheep, Rashi tells us that this corresponds to Torah Nevi'im and Ksuvim. And then Rashi says that each one of them, there was five of each one of these categories of, of sheep and, and goats, etc. So Rashi tells us three, three fives correspond, first of all, to the five chumashim, as well as to the five dibrois, which are written on one of the luchais, and the, and the other five on the other luach. So the question then becomes, why do we have two different karbonis or muzim for the Torah, and then as well, two different ones for the Aseris Hadibris. First, we mentioned the Kaf Achas. This is referring to the Torah given from Hashem and the Aseris Hadibris. And then now we're once again speaking about the Torah and the Vim and Ksuvim and the Hamish Chumashim and the Aseris Hadibris, the ten, the ten Dibris. Then the Rebbe asks another question from the words of Rashi on Elim Atudim Akvasim. Rashi actually says two things. He says, Keneged Koyanim Levim Yisraelim and now Rashi doesn't say Dover Achar, another Pshat, is that in addition to Kainam Levim Yisrael, it could be Torah Nevi'im Ksuvim. He doesn't say Viyash Oimrim. It seems obvious that Rashi is telling us that these aren't two different explanations in the remes of these three types of animals, but rather they're, they're both included, this Kainam Levim Yisrael, along with Torah Nevi'im Ksuvim. So the question is then, how could three minim these three different types of animals correspond to six things, Torah, Nevi'im, and Suvim, as well as Koyinim, Levi'im, and Yisraelim. The Rebbe now moves on to the remez of the three things that we just said, Eilim, Atudim, and Kvasim. And after that, Rashi explains, as we said before, why are there five from each one? Corresponding, we said, to the three things of five, the Chamish, Chumash, and the five Chumashim, there's the five Dibris that are written on one of the Luchais, and the five on the second. So we need to understand, number one, the remes of these shalosh chamishiyos, these three things of five, seemingly are not connected with the previous three things that we explained on the three types we said are corresponding to Torah, Nevi'im, and Ksuvim. Clearly, these three fives that we're saying now is not coming in continuation to that because only the first one of those three, Torah, not Torah, Nevi'im, and Ksuvim, only the first one, Torah, is the one that's divided into the five Chumashim. So in other words, when the Karbanis are being brought from these three things, these Eilim, Atudim, and Kvasim, and in a number of five, we're now suddenly saying that in addition to the general idea of three, now it's into a new concept, which is connected to the number of five. 
So the question now is, why do we need a separate remez for the Chamisha Chumashim if we already had the remez to the general idea of Torah, as we said before, within the Gimel Minim, we had Torah and Nevi'im and why do we also need to now have another remez for Chamisha Chumashim? Number two, says the Rebbe, from the order the way Rashi explains these three sets of five. He says, first, the five Chumashim. Then the five Dibreis that are on one of the Luchas and five on the other Luach. Says the Rebbe, it seems quite clear that he's not referring to the Aseris and Dibreis as they are on the stone Luchas, but rather, as the Rebbe is about to explain, that it's more referring to the Aseris and Dibreis, how they are recorded in the Torah because of the order of Rashi. The Luchas were given before the five Chumashim. So Rashi then should have started off with saying the two sets of five of the Aseris Hadibris and then the five Chumashim. So if he says it in the order first, the Chumashim, so when he's speaking about the Aseris Hadibris, he's clearly referring to the way it's written down in Chumash as part of the Chamisha, Chumash, uh, Chamisha Chumashim in Torah Shabbat Sav. Aye, then why is Rashi using the term five Dibris on one Luach and five on another Luach? Because the fact that the Aseris Hadibris were put on two separate Luchas, it's not only a physical and technical thing that was written on two different luchas. The reason why it's put on two separate luchas is because they are different to each other, these two sets of five. That is, the Rebbe explains it in two ways. One way of understanding is that the first five dibrois are primarily mitzvah saseh, because even the two loisa said that we find over there, which is not to bow down to idols and not to swear in Hashem's name falsely and in vain and so on, really, they're considered branches or parts of Anoichi Hashem Elekecha, which is the Asay. So generally, the first five are more the positive. The second five are all mitzvahs loisase. Another way of looking at it is that the first five are mainly being Adam Lamakoim. In fact, even Kibud Aim, honoring one's parents, which is in the first five. So it's explained that it's really a Bein Adam Lamakoim. It's not a Bein Adam Lachaveiroi because we know that a, ch a child is born with three partners. There's the parents and, and Hashem. And Razal tell us, Hashem made us honor our par parents, our father and mother, similar to the way we need to honor Hashem. So in other words, it's all real, of, a, a, a part of and connected with honoring Hashem or a mitzvah Shem Adam Lamokim. The second set of five is Ben Adam Lachaveri. So therefore, when Rashi puts it as that they're in two luchais, it's not because they're written on two stone luchais, but it's mainly because they're, they're, they're different kinds of Aseris and Dibrois, the five and five. But again, the way Rashi is mainly referring to them is the way they're in Chumash, in Torah, because otherwise the order would have been the other way, as we said before. But if that's the case, what we need to understand is since we have a Remez already, not only on Torah generally, as we said in the three kinds, that there's Torah, Nevi'im, and Ksuvim, we even have a Remez already for the five Chumashim, so why do we now need another remez for the Aseris Hadibrois that are in the five Chumashim? Says the Rebbe, we're going to understand all of this by first introducing another general question regarding the Karbonis of the Nesim. The Karbonis of the Nesim were obviously not just a general um, donation for the Mishkan, like we know that the Nesim also brought the different wagons to carry the Mishkan and so on, but rather... As the Pasuk says, it's, it's for the dedication of the Mizbeach. In other words, the dedication of the Mizbeach is being accomplished through the things that are going to be brought on the Mizbeach. We have the flour, the fine flour mixed with the oil, which is part of the Mincha. We have the Ktoires, the incense. We have the oil, Chatas, and the Shlamim. So the question becomes, why is it that the Pasuk starts off when describing the things that the Nesim bring, Rather than describing these karbonis that they bring, the things that are going to be brought on the Mizbeach, why does it start off with, it says karbonoi, the carbon that the Nasi brings, is karas kesefach, as it starts with the bowls and the, and the different basins and so on. And this is with a tremendous arichos of all the details, the weight of each one, the worth of each one, and so too afterwards when it goes to kafachas, one golden spoon, etc. As if this is the most important thing, as if this is what we're starting with, when well, we're speaking about Chanukah Samizbeach. So the explanation is, the Rebbe says it's, uh, it's quite obvious that the Ramazim of the Karbonis for the Chanukah Samizbeach and the Mishkan are going to be related, these Karbonis are somehow connected to the concept of what the Mizbeach is all about. In other words, that these Karbonis are really bringing out, they're coming to show what is the Chidush, what's happening in the Mizbeach and the Karbonis that are now being brought. 
In other words, the Nesim, when they're bringing these carbonates for the Mizbeach, they specifically set up the carbonates in a particular order, in a particular number, to, in which to show the novelty of what's happening now on the Mizbeach, different to the way things used to be before. What is the special ilu that's happening now in the carbonates that are being brought on the Mizbeach in the Mishkan, compared to the carbonates the way they were before Matan Torah? So we know the general, the whole idea of the Mishkan, the Chiddush, the novelty of the Mishkan is, as the Pasuk itself says, the Asuli Mikdash, Vishachanti Besoicham, that the Yidin are going to be making a place where there's Ashra Asashchina, where the Shechina will be in a revealed way, to the extent that the Mishkan itself is a Mikdash, a holy place. And so too, when we speak about the Chiddush of the Mizbeach in the Mishkan, that every single Yid has the ability to take something that was completely a mundane animal, and so on, or something that's completely not holy, and make out of it a carbon for Hashem in a way that you could see with our any boss or our eyes of flesh how it's becoming something holy. And how is that? That's brought it because it's being brought on the Mizbeach, and as we know that the fire came down from heaven consuming the carbon. So this is where it's seen in the most clear way, this idea of things becoming holy. In order to bring out this Chiddush, the Nesim are bringing two types of carbonis. The first one, the first type of carbonis is going to be hinted in the kalim and the vessels that they're bringing, and the mincha, the flour and the oil, etc., and the ktoires that's inside of them. That's going to be more of a remez on the carbonis, the way things used to be once upon a time before the Mizbeach and the Mishkan. In other words, it was a time that then too they brought carbonis. But we didn't have at that time, even at the end of that period, we didn't have the concept of Hashem, that a fire should come down from Hashem to consume the carbonis, which shows on the concept of Hashroas, Hashchina of the Shechina coming down. And therefore, in the Rem is which part of the things are they bringing for this, to hint to this aspect, to the part the way things used to be. So this is going to be both in the Kalim themselves, the vessels themselves that are bringing these bowls and so on as well as the things that are inside these vessels, the carbonates that are inside the vessels, which are more the flour, the oil, the incense, and so on. Because these are things where we don't see so much of a change happening inside of themselves. Representing this idea that once upon a time, when you brought a carbon, there wasn't so much of a change in the world. Whereas the second group of carbonates, the second category, the later things that the carbonates, the Nisim bring, the animals that are brought as oilo and chatas, etc. So they themselves, either completely, the best part of, or, or, the, or the best part of them, their fats and their blood, are going to be the carbonis where we see clearly how they are being brought and changed by lift, putting them on the mezbeach, sprinkling them on the mezbeach, and the fire of Hashem coming out and consuming them. So again, the main point is that in the first category, the first category are the, going to represent the things where we don't see so much of a difference, a change happening inside of them, representing the time the way things used to be before Matan Torah. The second category, the carbon is that Ramam is burnt on the Mizbeach, represents the way things are now after Matan Torah. And once we have the Mishkan, that there's a change in the Gashmias. The Rebbe says this difference could also be seen and hinted in the different types of carbonis. Whereas in the first type, the one that are in the Kalim, the vessels themselves, and specifically the mincha, the ktoiris that inside of them, these are from things that are from, from not from chai, not from animals, not from the living things, or that the chai is not noticeable in them. So we're speaking about things of doimim and tzemeach, etc. Where is the carbonis of the second category, which are the animals? This is the suga chai of the living, of the animal kingdom, which hints to the idea that through the Mishkan and the Mizbeach, we now have a new Chidush in, the, in this tremendous Indian that's happening, the Gili and the Ashra, Sashchina, that as opposed to having doiming things that are just inanimate or weekday and mundane, we take out of that and we're making living things out of that, we're bringing Kedusha into it. So again, the previous Karbonis would be more representing the time before Matan Torah where things weren't so full of life, and this time now, after Matan Torah, we're bringing animals which represents the idea that now we have more Chayas, in other words, the idea of Kedusha being brought into the world. Says the Rebbe, this Chiddush that we find in the Mishkan and the Mizbeach, after Matan Torah, is simply hinted in the idea, and indicated in the idea, that Matan Torah, of course, is connected to the idea that Yidin are becoming a Mamleches Koyanim, the Goy Kaddish, Yidin themselves are becoming holy now, and therefore their 
also being given these kind of mitzvahs that can mamish bring kedusha into physical items. And even a Ben Chamesh Lemikra could understand and see this idea that we have objects now in our world that are Mamish holy. Now says the Rebbe, even though it's true we were saying that this mainly starts a Matan Torah, when Yidin are becoming a Mamleches Koyen of a Goy Kodesh, and that's why now they're the ones being commanded in the Tariag Mitzvahs. But at least to a certain degree on some level, this already started by the first Yid by Avram Avinu. And that's why he is the one that's given and told the Mitzvah of Milah, which is a brisi, a covenant of Hashem b'fsarachim in the flesh, which is already in the gather, as Rashi told us, of a chayfet shol mitzvah, it's already considered a holy item. So now we're going to start understanding perfectly well the order of the way Rashi is explaining the remozim of the karbon is based on Rab Moshe Adarshan. So although it's drash, but it's close to pshat, and really explains the pshut shol mikra, because now we can start understanding that we're speaking about these two general categories. We're going to have those things that are more of the doimim, of the inanimate objects, the bowls, etc. The basins, which are, are, are doimim. So they're going to be more remozim. Hints on Adam Orishan and his children, Noyach and his children, and the 70 nations and so on, where we don't see so much the idea of chayas, because as we said, it's inanimate objects. And chayas, again, representing hashroas hashchina, so it wasn't bringing down the shechina as so much. And on the other hand, when we start speaking about the things, the animals, which are chay, so now it's starting to be explained how these are connected more to the Yidden. And furthermore, not only the Yidden, but really starting from Avram, Avinu, and the Avois, because as we said, somewhat of that Asherah, Sashchina started then, all the way till Moshe and Aaron, the Koyanim, Levim, and Yisrael. Says the Rebbe, but what remains not understood is, according to this, becomes even a bigger problem, what we said before, why Kaf Achas Asorozov, Mleyek is that golden spoon, that's filled with Ktoires, which is coming from the doimim and some tzomeach, the k'toyres, the kaf is doimim and, it's, and the k'toyres inside of his tzomeach. So why are we now translating that and connecting that to Torah? We said that's the Torah that's given from the hand of Hashem and the Asor Zov represents on the Aseris Hadibrois and the k'toyres filled with k'toyres means the tayag mitzvois. How does that fit? So says the Rebbe, the explanation is, if we look at Rashi, Rashi said Bediuk, he said kaf achas represents the hand corresponding to the Torah that was given from the hand of Hashem, which means that we're referring not to Torah generally, but we're speaking about the Luchos, which as we know, this is, we find clearly this expression that was given from the hand of Hashem. And so too, when it says Asorozov, we said, Rashi says, it's the Aseris and Dibrois. And Malayo Ktoiris, when it says filled with Ktoiris, and Rashi says, it's the Gematria, and related Rashi explains how the Gematria works over here, but it corresponds to the Tariag Mitzvahs, we don't mean as the Tariag Mitzvahs are now something separate away from the Aseris Hadibris and away from the Luchos, but rather, just like we said the Kaf, the spoon, is filled with the Ktoiris, in a similar way over here, we're speaking about the Tariag as it's part of the Luchos, it's part of the Aseris Hadibris that are given from that Kaf from the hand of Hashem. In other words, the luchos contain the aseris adibris. The kaf is the as- luchos that contain the aseris, the aseris adibris, the ten, which is asarozov. And the asar, and this aseris adibris and the kaf are malaya ktoiris. They're filled with the ktoiris, which is the idea of the tariag mitzvahs. And again, Rashi explains how the, ta- the gematria works over here. What does that mean? Rashi told us already earlier in Pashas Mishpatim that really all the tariag mitzvahs are included and hinted within the aseris adibris. So in summary, the kaf achas asoros of Malayak Torahs is really all referring to the luchais, the aseris adibris, and the tariag mitzvahs as they are in the luchais and the way they were given from Hashem. Says the Rebbe, since this is referring to the way it was given from Hashem, so now we understand what it's doing right over here between these two sets of categories. That really it's more connected to the first category, the things when we're speaking about the doimim. Why? Because the fact that Torah and mitzvahs, which we said before, makes things into a Dover Kodesh, a Chayfet Shal Mitzvah, giving it life, is really more about when the Yid is accepting the Torah and mitzvahs and doing a mitzvah practically. Torah and mitzvahs, the way they're on their own, the way they're part of Hashem and Hashem's delight, and even the way they, Hashem is giving the Torah, that Kaf Achas, we said, is the way Hashem is giving the Torah, but that's not what's bringing the Kedusha in a permanent way forever into the world. We know Ben Chamesh Lemikra knows already something that he learned that when the Shechina came down on Har Sinai, the mountain didn't become holy forever. It's only, and that's why we say when, the, when there was the blast of the Shofar, when the Shechina goes away, people could go back up on the mountain. In other words, the Shechina didn't come down in a permanent way. 
Nevertheless, says the Rebbe, since at the time of Matan Torah there was already a Kedusha coming down on the mountain, and that's why at the time of Matan Torah, Hanegeya Bahar Moisumas. So, of course, this calf that we're saying represents the Torah the way the Ebishta is giving, of course, there's something very holy about it. It's, a, it's coming from Zav, it's gold. In other words, it's actually more precious than all the other previous vessels that were discussed, which was coming from silver. Because obviously now we're speaking about something on a much higher darga. This is already the preparation to the next stage, where there's going to be the life coming into the world. The, the idea of chai, that Torah and Mitzvah is going to be able to make, not a, to make out of the doyim, to make something alive, to bring the Kedusha into the world. But it's still not at that level yet. Says the Rebbe, based on this idea, that Torah and Mitzvah on its own is not yet hinted in this category of chai, so we can now understand what Rashi is going to say on Eilim Atudim and Kvasim, which we said before that Rashi says it's corresponding to the Kainim Levim Yisraelim and Torah Nevi'im and Ksuvim. So the Rebbe says Rashi is not coming to just give us another hint for Torah Nevi'im and Ksuvim, which we asked before, that we have two, uh, something on Torah already, why do we need another one? And it, we also asked if we have two different Pirushim on the three, then it comes out that there are six things. The Rebbe says no. The first level of Torah we were speaking about in Kaf Achas Hasar Azov, as we said, is not in this category at all of the Chai. So we didn't discuss yet Torah the way Yidin are accepting and doing Torah. So here, now when we start speaking about these three categories, in, in the Elim and Atudim and Kvosim, now we're speaking mainly the three, that as Rashi mentioned before, the Koyin and Levim and Yisrael, when we now start speaking about the, the Torah and Nevi'im and Ksuvim, we're speaking about how the Yidin are one with these parts of Torah. We're not speaking about Torah the way it was Hashem that gave it. We're saying it's not six things, there's three things. There's the Yidin, Torah, and the Koyin and Levim Yisrael, and how they are being part of the, how Torah becomes one with them. And the Rebbe says this is coming in continuation to what Rashi said just before this, Ulezevach Hashlom in Bokar corresponding to Moshe and Aaron, who were the ones that, shlo, the word Shlomim is the word Shalom, they are the ones that bring peace between Hashem, between the Yidin and their father in heaven and Hashem. The idea of Shalom, peace between the Yidin and Hashem, Moshe, Rabbein, Moshe and Aaron achieved this, when is this? Primarily by Matan Torah, through Torah and Mitzvahs. And therefore, since these three categories of Elim, Atudim and Kvasim, the rams, the male goats, the sheep, are Karbonai Shlomim, that itself is telling us that when we say koyanim, levim in Yisraelim, we don't only mean yidin b'chlau, their tremendous qualities and so on. We're speaking about yidin the way they're one with Torah, Torah nevim and ksuvim. Because that's the way it becomes the sholem, that connection between the yidin and avim shabbat shamay. Says the Rebbe, according to all of this, it's also understood, the continuation of what Rashi says, that right after saying k'nege Torah nevim and ksuvim, he says, in within the same Dibra Maschal, that it corresponds to the three sets of five, the five Chumashim, and the five Dibrois on each Luach, etc. And the Rebbe says, since it's coming in continuation to what we just said, Kenegatoira, Nevi'im, Iksuvim, etc., and mainly Kenegatoira, it's understood that when we're now going to start speaking about three sets of five, we're now not coming to give a new Rem as about something specific, completely different. But rather, it's coming in continuation to this idea of Kenegatoira, Nevi'im, Iksuvim. What is that? In order to emphasize that we're speaking about Torah, as we said before, mainly the way Yidin are taking Torah, the way Yidin are becoming united with Torah. Not like in the previous passage where we said, Kaf Achas, which is the Torah, the way it's given from Hashem. So in order to emphasize this idea, the Nesim are bringing these three, to, I, these three minim, these three animals in numbers of five, which represents the division that is in Torah and Mitzvahs. Again, different to the way it was given from Hashem, the emphasis over here, the way Yidin are taking it. That is, the way the Eibishter gives us the Torah, all of Torah is one Indian. Because as we know, Hashem says, all the Aseris had is bedibur echad in one saying. The Rebbe says, this will actually explain to us also, why Rashi, when he explains the words, kaf achas asar ozov, etc., why, why he quotes the word, when he says kaf is corresponding to the Torah, he says kaf achas. Seemingly, he's only explaining the word kaf, that it's the hand of Hashem. Why does he emphasize the word kaf achas? Because he's trying to emphasize this very idea that we're speaking the level of Torah the way Hashem is giving it, where there's only oneness. It is, despite the fact that there's Aseris Hadibris and it's filled with Torahs of Tariyag Mitzvahs, but from Hashem's perspective, it's really Yukaf Achas, it's one point, it's one Indian. It's specifically when Yidin are the ones that are receiving Torah and Mitzvahs. Now we suddenly start seeing the division within Torah and Mitzvahs. First of all, the division within Torah that there's five Chumashim, 
And each Chumash obviously has a different content and different ideas. And so to the division within mitzvahs, that the Aseris Adibra is that although we said the Aseris Adibra is coming from Hashem the way they're one, but really the Aseris Adibra, which include all the Tariag mitzvahs, there's really two categories. We're again seeing division. There's the five on one Luach, which as we said corresponds more with the positive, with the Asay. There's the five with the, on the other Luach, more connected with the negative. So we're seeing division. Whereas the Aseris Adibra and Tariag mitzvahs, the way they were given from Hashem, that was hinted in the part where we said, Kaf achas asor ozov, the way it's given from Hashem. Here we don't see the division of two times five. Because when it's coming from Hashem, we don't see the division. Rather, we're seeing mainly the way the Aseris Hadibrois are all one Metzius. And that's why it's hinted in Kaf achas.